Okay, good afternoon. I guess we're going to get started here. Um, my name is Joe Batista, and I'm a 1983 graduate of the Smeal College of Business and uh, have had a uh, kind of an interesting career in and out of uh, sports at the professional and collegiate level. And, uh, and I'm now uh, currently a consultant and working predominantly in the fundraising business. Um, you may have heard of uh, Pagula Ice Arena. Anybody been there? Okay. Uh, well, I was the club hockey coach here for 19 years, played hockey here, and then uh, was uh, in, very involved in getting uh, Mr. Pagula to give the uh, initial gift of $88 million, followed by an additional gift of $14 million so that we could build the building and elevate the hockey programs from club to varsity status. And uh, so that was a big change for me, um, the, everything that happened with that. I was actually working in the college business at that time, but was still working with Mr. Pagula. And uh, it gave me an opportunity to uh, go back into hockey uh, full time. I went back into the athletic department as an associate athletic director and, uh, and then eventually went up to Buffalo, where I was vice president of the Sabres uh, in uh, hockey administration and business administration. So I was basically the guy who worked between the hockey department and the business department. Um, that was not an easy job. <laughs> so the hockey people were very reluctant to let the business people in and vice versa. And uh, so it was a challenge but it was a lot of fun and it was an opportunity for me to really get to meet some great people. Um, so uh, I coached when I first came out of college. Uh, my first job was with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Any Penguins fans here? Okay. Time's game tonight? Eight o'clock? Okay, good, just check, just checking. Okay, um, and uh, I, while I was there working in marketing, uh, I also was the director of amateur hockey development. That's where I got bit by the coaching bug and decided I wanted to go into coaching full time. And uh, coached junior penguins, coached at Kent State University. I coached at a really little prep school named Culver Military Academy. Anybody ever hear of Culver? I didn't think so. Um, George Steinbrenner and the Steinbrenner family that owned the New York Yankees, they all went to school there. The uh, Lay family of Frito Lay went to school there. So it's a pretty prestigious prep school. And uh, why I was there is beyond me, but uh, I coached hockey, I coached golf, and I taught leadership development classes uh, at, that, uh, at that time. Came back here in 1987, uh, was the hockey coach, ran the ice rink, the old ice rink. And then uh, in 2006, I became the head of the Nittany Lion Club. Does anybody know what the Nittany Lion Club is? Anybody? What, what does it do? Do you know? Oh, oh, okay. No, all right. Nobody knows. Are there any athletes in here? Or just athletic supporters? Just kidding. No? Okay. The Nittany Lion Club is where they raise money for the athletic scholarships. All right. So we raised about $14 million a year to help pay for scholarships for the 850 some athletes. So uh, after doing that, I went over to the College of Business and did major gift fundraising, where we were trying to raise money predominantly for student scholarships and faculty positions. Um, and it was there that I met, you know, sp spent a lot of time with the Bagula. So without any further ado, I've got some stuff and I will invite you down when class is over to, to come and take a look at some of the things that I've got here. Um, to me, I, I just attended a C-suite um, networking conference in Boston a few, uh, few weeks ago. And um, for instance, one, one of the topics was women in IT. I'm glad to see as many women in here as, as there are because there aren't enough in, in IT uh, at all. It, and, and I think there's plenty of opportunities in this field and some of the speakers that were there were phenomenal and, and talking about what, what's to come. Um, ideapreneurs, okay, a little twist on entrepreneurship, 
all right? Uh, another great topic. So these, these are things that are down here. One that I would tell you that I think almost anybody needs is something along the lines of a Dale Carnegie course. Anybody ever heard of D Dale Carnegie? All right. What do they do? Okay, it's, it's, it's all about people, right? People skills, social skills, okay? Speaking. Has anybody ever heard of Toastmasters? Okay, if you have trouble standing up in front of people and doing what I'm doing right now, I'd encourage you to join the Toastmasters wherever you end up. Find one in your town. They teach you how to get over that fear of speaking, okay? And it's amazing how many people who never in a million years thought they could get up and give a talk, a lecture, a TED talk, uh, come out of those feeling confident and learning the skills that make you relax, okay? So Dale Carnegie is another one. Um, these are some of the books that I've either read or am reading. Um, and I'll just go over real quick. One is your gut is still not smarter than your head. That's all about analytics, okay, especially in sports. We're seeing huge change, right, in what's going on. Um, everybody matters is about how you treat employees and colleagues. All right, good, good book. Caught between a dream and a job. If you haven't read a book like this, I would encourage you to at your age. All right? you, gotta, you gotta figure out what matters to you. And, and you know, what, how do you define success? All right? Everybody does it differently. Some people think it's money. Some think, people think it's power, prestige, that sort of thing. For some people it's contentment, it's happiness. All right? For some it's both, all of the above. All right? Well, guess what? That's not as easy as it sounds. All right. This idea of work-life balance, you know what I used to tell my family? I work so you can have balance. All right. uh, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, I can tell you right now, you're working a lot. Okay? And if anybody tells you different, they're lying to you. All right? When it's you getting the phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning, you don't get to delegate that one off All right? when something goes wrong with your business. All right, so remember those kind of things. Uh, Good to Great was a book written 20 years ago. A more recent version is Grit to Great. It still gets back to, this is all about people, okay? It's all about grinding. It's all about having to find solutions. And you know what? The problem doesn't care that you have a workout scheduled at six o'clock, okay? It doesn't care if you've got these other things. Um, that are scheduled. Oh, I've, I've, uh, sorry, that's my social night. And there are people that will say, hey, I, you know what? I don't miss my card game for anybody or anything. Okay, don't be an entrepreneur then. All right? It doesn't work that way. I'm giving you the harsh facts about what it's really like out there. All right? uh, Real leadership. This book just came out. I heard John Addison speak, and I couldn't wait for his book to come out, so I just started it. All right, and it's, I'm already totally engrossed in it. Um, and finally, one of my favorites, because I'm certainly a shy, quiet guy, as you can tell, if you don't make waves, you'll drown. All right? If you believe in something passionately, you're going to go after it. Okay? It took us 35 years to get hockey back to varsity status. 35 years. That was the journey I was on. Looked like it was going to happen and it didn't. It looked like it was going to happen and it didn't. Bottom line is we got it done. Okay, so we're going to be talking about sports technology and I can tell you that you probably know more about this than I do because see, I come from old school, all right? Yeah, that, that, that's me, okay? That's not my hair, that's a helmet. You believe that, right? Okay, so um, you notice on the right, that's Mount Nittany in the background. We played my first two years on an outdoor temporary ice rink because they had taken the rink that was there and converted it into an AstroTurf field for football because they didn't have Luba Hall back then. So for my first two years, we traveled to and from Johnstown and Mechanicsburg, PA to play our games and to practice, or we practiced on the outdoor rink if it wasn't snowing or raining. Okay. Well, now, of course, 
We've got Pagula Ice Arena, state-of-the-art, world-class facility, technologically as advanced as an arena you'll, you'll find. There's five cameras up in the roof there that can be controlled in a room so that the coaches can go back and analyze just about anything. All right? And this is a collegiate arena. You start looking at what's going on at pro arenas around the country. The technology is changing constantly. A couple years ago, the Montreal Canadiens were the first hockey team that I'm aware of that put projections on the ice surface. And they had flames, and it blew everybody away. Nobody else in the NHL had done it. Well, now everybody's got them, right? So it's that in-game experience. Why? Who are they competing with? Who, who are these live sporting events? Who do they compete with? Do, do, you, do you go to every live sporting event? No. What do you do? Where are you watching it? TV, you know what, look, see, I reward people who aren't afraid to speak up. You get a Penn State hockey puck. All right, there you go. So come on, let's, let's, I know it's the afternoon. I see some of you got your Starbucks, you got, you know, come on, wake up here, all right? Um, bottom line, you're competing, you're trying to get somebody in football. Do you know that college football attendance all across the country is down, way down? I mean, everybody here thinks it's because of the crisis that we went through. We saw this coming 10 years ago. We knew it was coming because it, if you live in Hazleton or you live in Delaware County or Erie, PA, and you wake up at 6 o'clock in the morning and you're thinking about coming up here to watch a football game and it's pouring down rain and it's 37 degrees, you're all, you're, you're, here's your choices. Hmm. Get up at 6 in the morning, drive for three hours, sit out in the rain and the cold, or I can stay in my house watch that on a 70-inch 4K TV screen, and oh, by the way, I can check the scores of the other games, and I can have a beer, <laughs> which you can't do in Beaver Stadium, right? Okay, so that's the competition, all right? So, at any rate, uh, my favorite part of going to the games is seeing the Roar Zone, the student section. I, I had a big hand in designing this facility, and we basically took pictures of the old Hershey Arena and the old Buffalo Auditorium and designed that so it was as steep as code would allow us because we wanted our students to be right on top of the opposing goalie. So every time that we scored a goal, they let him have it, right? Or her have it, right? That's, that's the whole idea there. So it's intimidating, all right? Little home ice advantage. Uh, that's to me one of the most fun parts of the game being able to be there. So this is my son, Ryan, and he, I was working for the Sabres, and he came up and said, Dad, uh, we're playing the Penguins. Uh, you know, is it okay if I wear my Sidney Crosby shirt? And I went, are you nuts? I work for the Sabres. You know, no, you can't wear your, you know, say your, your, your Sidney Crosby shirt. So this is what he did, and he put this out on Facebook. That's my boy, <laughs> okay? So, anyway, we have fun. Now, that's my son, Jonathan, over there on the right. Is he here? He better be here. Oh, my, I'm going to knock him upside. He's, a, he's an IST major, so I don't know if any of you know him. He's famous now because yesterday there was an article about the Penn State Coffee Club, and he's their webmaster. They spelled his name wrong, but that's okay. That happens to us all the time. No respect. John. Yes. There you go. Good. Whack him upside the head for me, would you? So at any rate, but John, that's Jonathan. You know, he, he's hanging out with Mario Lemieux. Uh, he's one of the owners of the Penguins, but he used to be one of the st top stars. Prob basically considered one of the top three or four hockey players of all time. Okay. So now I'm going to uh, tell you a little story about how relationship things work. So my family comes up to see that game. They're playing, the Penguins had to win the game to get into the playoffs. Buffalo, we were out. We were guaranteed 30th place, which is last place, which also means you get one of the top two draft picks, okay? And that turned out to be a really good player. However, my daughter, who's been trying to meet Sidney Crosby, was so pumped. Dad, we're going to get down to watch pregame practice, all right? 
uh, Brianna, I find out the Penguins aren't skating. You know, there, there's a couple players coming in for some, uh, you know, therapy. That's it. So why don't you go with mom, go shopping. So I took my son and my 95-year-old father-in-law down to the Sabres locker room, showed them around. We come walking out, and who do we run smack dab into? Sidney Crosby. Okay? He was in there getting treatment. I text the picture out. I made the mistake, you know. I tweeted it out. My daughter, I hate you. You told me not to come. I can't believe my grandfather met Sidney Crosby and I didn't. Right? One of those things. But so later that night, she made me wait all night till he came out of the locker room. And he was the last person out of that locker room. So she got to meet him. <laughs> so, you know, that dad's not so bad. However, what you're going to find is, this is technology, okay? Um, that's my neck. Right there, I got a piece of titanium, six screws. They went in right here, okay, to fix two discs that I had that had to be fused together. Right? I, had, I was in so much pain all the time, I could not feel my arms. I couldn't sleep. It affected my work. It affected my, <laughs> I was miserable. I was miserable to be around, okay? This same operation, five years earlier, would have required a lot more surgery, a rod in your neck, okay? Um, it, it's, we've come so far with technology, and it's just getting started, okay? They're telling us now, and don't take my word for it, Faith Popcorn, that's really her name, Faith Popcorn. She's a futurist, okay? She talks about what's coming next, all right? You know, we have wearable items, right? She's talking about the next real advance that's coming in this kind of technology. You want to know how you find out? You look in the mirror. It's going to be us. It's going to be us with implanted technology, okay? It's, come, it's already here. People with Parkinson's disease, the, the one where people shake, okay? They now have these sensors that they can literally put in their brain, okay? That's hooked up to a machine that stops that shaking, right? The advances are amazing, okay? So, by the way, I say don't get screwed for a reason. If you're doing this all the time, how many of you do that? <laughs> On your phones, your laptops, your iPads, whatever, right? Here we are, like this. You're doing what I had to have an operation for. You are compressing your C5, 6, and 7 discs. Okay, so work on your posture or you're gonna end up like this old guy, okay? And that was not fun. Good news is, I'm golf again, so, all right? Now, I did get screwed because my daughter tweeted this picture out on social media, okay? Making fun of me like I'm Darth Vader, okay? Um, all right, let's get a little more serious here. So that's Brian Burke, who's been a general manager in Anaheim, in Toronto, in Calgary. Well, he used to be the NHL representative to the Sloan Institute on Sports Analytics at MIT. Anybody ever heard of that? Okay. If you're into this, if you really want to go into sports as a field, make sure you go on that website and learn everything you can. Okay, there's a local state college guy that's uh, made quite a name for himself, Michael Shucker, that uh, is, is presented at this numerous times, okay? And it's gone big, but you had guys that just said, eh, ah, it's not gonna ever help hockey. That's a baseball, that's a money ball thing. That doesn't work in hockey, right? Now, I used to think maybe he was just trying to throw a little misdirection at us, right? But he's still, they're, they're way behind the game. Soccer is way out ahead of the game. Soccer's been doing it far longer than baseball. Um, how many of you have seen the movie, movie Moneyball or read the book? Okay. Um, well, the Pirates also have a book about them called Big Data Baseball. Okay. That's all about what they did to utilize analytics 
to help them. And look at where they are now. After 21 losing seasons in a row, now they're back in the hunt. Okay? They did some pretty uh, innovative things with technology, and it's gotten them right back into the hunt. All right? So I went, when I was working up in Buffalo, I, we were the same way. Everything was pretty old school. Walked into the draft room the first day I was there, and I was like, it's a conference room with two HD TVs and a projector screen and a bunch of guys sitting around a table all arguing with one another, shifting through their papers, going through their binders. We wasted so much time. Okay, So I got on the website, looked at, this is the Denver Broncos. Now, they still have their three-ring binders there because some, some of the folks still the old-fashioned, us baby boomers, we're, you know, we're a little slow, right? But you'll notice that the screens that they have, okay? And that's real data. They're able to manipulate it. They've got algorithms going on, okay? Um, so we ended up taking a page from them, and that's what our Sabres war room looks like now, okay? So over here, those are HD TVs. Um, this is a screen that we can put data on. Um, or watch video on. These are two 80-inch touchscreen uh, TVs that are interactive where we can watch video on these or we can shift people around. And as you touch it, you can drag somebody over and move people around and your um, salary cap is automatically adjusted in real time. So when you're thinking about making a trade, all that happens instantaneously. In the old days, you know, you were up on a dry erase board, you had people arguing. I had these two scouts the first year I was there, they were arguing about which guy was tougher and this guy's tougher. I was at a game, I saw this guy beat the hell out of that guy. He says, wait a minute, I was at that game, that guy didn't beat him up. And they're arguing, arguing, arguing. So while they were all arguing about what they thought they saw, we pulled up the video and watched the fight to see who was really the tougher guy, okay? Uh, you know, data doesn't lie. All right, video doesn't lie. Okay, so at any rate, now here's uh, Kyle Kiesbach. He's our, our guy that, that worked on this. Um, this was proprietary. Um, we, we, as far as we know, we were the first NHL team to do it. And that's what I'm talking about here. So he can put up here Buffalo Sabres, you can put the St. Louis Blues over here, and you start dragging people back and forth. And you can see what your ghost roster looks like in 2016, 17, 18. And you can start to look, well, if we, if we trade for this guy, what's that going to do? We're going to have all these restricted free agents or these unrestricted free agents. we we got a plan for that. And you just run projections. Right? It was no different. You know, we had a General Mills plant right behind the Buffalo Arena. I said, well, you know, what, do you think they just go in someday and go, yeah, I think today we'll make lucky charms. It doesn't work like that. So why weren't we using that for sport? Right? Sports is now, I believe, the ninth biggest industry in the world. It's bigger than the automobile industry and Hollywood, right? when you take in its totality, psychology, medical, all the apparel, et cetera, okay? strength and conditioning, workouts, et cetera. Sports as an industry, the ninth biggest in the world. Think about that. Think about the opportunities that are out there. Unfortunately, everybody thinks the only way to get in sports, well, I've got to work for the Pirates or the Eagles or the you know, Tampa Bay Lightning. Or, no. You can work for conferences. You can work for leagues. You can work for agents. You can work for agencies, right? Media. Lots of technology opportunities right now. Tons of them. Everybody is hiring IT people in the sporting world because most of us old farts don't understand it. We need you to come in and do it for us, okay? So again, oh, by the way, there's my, my son and all his buddies. Um, I, my son, Jonathan, when he came to Buffalo and did an internship with me in the summer, we looked at the uh, electric bill from the previous summer to last summer, and it was double when he was home, <laughs> okay? Because all his buddies come down, and they play video games, and they're on there with people from all over the world, which I think is awesome. You know, six billion people are a click away, if you think about it, a click away. 
Everything's changed, everything, okay? This is current wearable technology. We used Catapult with the Sabres, okay? That is about the size of a quarter. That's a Zebra device. That's what the Bills were wearing because the, the Pagulas own both the Sabres and the Bills now, all right? So you can see, now this did some things that the Zebra technology didn't, and, you know, but still, the players hated this. They hated wearing these because they noticed them, right? So now, if you go and do some research, you'll see that it's getting to the point where it's just almost like a patch, right? So it's not as uh, disruptive. And here's, for instance, a camera, a wearable camera. So imagine a soccer player running or a football player, and that's right in their jersey, okay? So the implications for coaching, for individual skill development, and for officiating, and maybe there's some ethical things going on there. I can tell you the players are skeptical of all this stuff, okay? They and their agents don't like this. Why? Because they can't hide from the truth when they come in to negotiate their contract. Hey, you know, you lost a step. You know, before that was, you know, somebody with a handheld stopwatch, right? Now it's, oh, sorry, we got you, right? So th there's some of those things that need to be thought through, okay? Uh, how many of you have tried the Oculus Rift? You get a chance to, okay. So we, we have this um, in, uh, up in Buffalo, and a lot of other teams are using these. Um, you know, you just plug the Samsung or your iPhone, whatever, right in, um, and, and it's amazing. Coaches have the ability to, using CGI, to adapt. So you're sitting down right now. If Penn State football wants to prepare for Ohio State, they have to teach their team, their foreign team, the, the Ohio State defense. And then the offense has to go out and, you know, you're risking somebody getting hurt, right? Every time you run a play. Well, now you got the quarterback in with a coach. The coach is sitting at a computer console and utilizing CGI can actually take real game film of Ohio State and just kind of erase a defensive back and have him blitz, okay, with a computer generated image. How cool is that? And now the, the quarterback's just running like this, and he's seeing all this, he's got to react. He can run 100 reps in the amount of time that it would take to run one play in the past, and you had to have 22 guys, right? This is all a game changer in what's going on, okay? Flex Coach is a organization that I've been involved with as a consultant, and I'm gonna walk you through. This is an actual proposal to show you what's coming, okay? So, anybody recognize the gentleman where it says, I want to learn? Who is it? That's Mike Sullivan. That's the Penguins' new coach. Think he's made a difference? He's been using technology like Flex Coach for over a decade, um, whereas some of his predecessors were stuck in the Stone Age with the way they taught, the way they communicated, all right? And so these are some of the things that Flex Coach does right now, utilizing innovative ideas to better educate coaches, better educate players, better educate officials. So if you look at this, and I apologize for, for doing this. I don't know if you know this, but I'm a last minute fill-in. <laughs> so I found out I was giving this talk two days ago. So you'll have to bear with me um, on, on what's happening here. But basically Flex Coach, was intended to come in, instead of you having to keep doing a practice plan year after year, put it all on the computer, okay? You just drew up, okay, I, I need a two-on-one drill. Uh, if it's softball or baseball, it's okay, we're working on cutoff plays, whatever, and it just automatically, you just clicked on it, dragged it in. You know, if you're, if you're a mom or a dad, and you're working for a living and you're coaching your kid's soccer team, or baseball or softball team, hey, you, how much time do you really have to sit down and play in a practice, right? So this was intended to make it easier. Hockey is one of the few sports out there. You can't coach in ice hockey unless you're certified, all right? I will never understand why baseball, football, some of these other aren't doing this. 
I mean, we just let any person out there, we'll do a background check on them, but that doesn't mean they know how to coach, all right? So one of the things that Flex Coach is trying to do, and it started off with hockey, but it's moved into other sports, okay? And you can see there that, that you know, you've got web-based web stuff, you've got the coaching programs that are online, all that's, you know, it, it moves. Now you can go to the site and watch a video of a, of a drill, that sort of thing. And now it's becoming interactive, all right? So it's even better, all right? Um, and these are some of the actual programs. You can see, you can even get into game plan situation. All these drills, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It makes everything much more efficient, right? And it allows the players to give feedback, okay? Um, so, as you're well aware, we got the Oculus, um, the goggles, the virtual reality goggles. This is the next big thing. Now, see that me on the left there? That was back in 2007, virtual reality goggles. And this was part of a concussion protocol study that we did here at Penn State. We were way out ahead of the game. Do you know that we could not talk anybody into funding this? We, we were so far out ahead of everybody else and we could not convince anyone, the National Institute of Health, you know, any, any government agencies, no private, nobody. Back then, those goggles cost $75,000 a piece. It was expensive. You know what they are now, right? 99 bucks, 100, 199, whatever. Here, there won't be PlayStations and Xboxes before you know it, right? Or they'll be really cheap, okay? So, you know, we, we look at this as lots of opportunity because nobody's been able to teach what we call hockey sense or intuition, you know. I am very proud of the fact that our Penn State football linebackers, like Sean Lee, Dan Connor, Paul Puzlozny, okay, Shane Conlon, if you looked at them strictly based on their 40-yard da 40 dash, their weightlifting, whatever, you, you wouldn't make necessarily pick them. None of them got picked really that high, okay? But the one thing every one of them had was the instinct for the game, right? So the question is, can it be trained? Can you teach people how to be able to anticipate? Can you measure their ability to anticipate? Better yet, because now you're, when you're drafting, you start looking and going, you know what? This person over here is fast, strong, blah, blah. But you know what? This one knows how to play the game, okay? Let's measure What's in here and what's in here? I want to know, are they going to be there when we need them? All right. I went to the World Sports Performance Summit in New York City uh, three years ago. And the, some of the people that were there was amazing. The people, rugby, okay, cricket, soccer. Right. Um, we had water polo, team handball. Right. And of course, there were Major League Baseball, basketball, et cetera. There were only five NHL teams in attendance. Only five. They didn't think this stuff was important. I'm like, how can you not? We have access to all this new information. Right? Part of it is I think people are scared. They don't know what to do with the information. You get all this data, what do you do with it? Because really, just having the data is not good enough. You gotta know how to interpret it. Right? Well, you gotta start somewhere. We hired for the Sabres a guy who played Division I hockey, played minor pro hockey, had an undergraduate degree in mechanical engineering, his master's degree was in aeronautical engineering, and his PhD was in math. He really was a rocket scientist. Okay? That's who we hired to do our analytics. He came up with some pretty cool stuff, all right? and it's all proprietary. We're not going to share it with the other teams in the league. We'll talk about some of it but we have our own thing, right? And all teams are doing it now. Where a year ago, teams didn't even have that position. There's some teams now have seven, eight people in a department, right? Sabres just posted a position for a director of hockey IT, right? That position didn't exist. All kind of opportunities out there. So again, 
How can we teach people to think the game, right? There's a lot of opportunities here. So it's not just the athlete, it's, it's officiating. And you know, this, this voice wasn't always this pretty, okay? I, I, I didn't always have this deep voice. Uh, this, was, this was 30 years of um, <clears throat> teaching referees Italian lessons, okay? That's me and my assistant coach um, having a conversation with the officials. I, I will tell you that I am, I am so angry with the state of officiating in sports. It has not kept up with the level of play, all right? You hate to do that because you can't, as a coach, you don't want to make a shoot. Point is, it, 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 the game could be better, and I'm talking all sports. We don't do enough to train these poor victims because <laughs> they get abused by everybody. It's not fun. I refereed. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's hard, okay? But imagine if we could train them using this kind of technology. Is the, is the market there? You bet. You see what that figure says? 40 million kids that play youth sports. Think there's some opportunity there? I'd say, you know, there's a reason Nike and Under Armour and Adidas and, you know, that's such a competitive field. You get your hands on 10% of that market. You know, there's some cha-ching to be made, right? So you look at this, the growth in, in what's happening in, in, in sports, okay, our interest. Personally, I have an issue with some of this. I think we spend way too much time on sports. And I've been in the business my entire life, okay? I think we make it way too important, but it is what it is, okay? We, we watch it, we participate in it, all right? We pay a lot of money to wear things because we're still a tribal people, right? You know, oh, who do you root for, right? You know, oh, I'm the Dallas Cowboys, I'm the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, and that's how we all, you know, kind of congregate. You know, there's Steeler bars all over the world. That's, that, that blows my mind, okay? And I grew up in Pittsburgh, so I, you know, but at any rate, so virtual reality is big. We know that this market, the projections are huge, and I'll bet you that's a conservative figure, right? I just have a feeling that it's going to be even bigger when it's all said and done, okay? There's only two competitors that we're aware of in the hockey business right now. And, you know, there's, there's a, another company called Sport Tech that also owns Hockey Tech that really isn't into the virtual space, but they're probably going to buy one of these. You know, they're either going to buy Flex Coach or that's the way this works, right? So our job is to try to make them want to buy us, <laughs> okay? That's how you make your money in this business, all right? And, you look at, there's a couple others. Striver is really probably the, the gold standard for football, all right? And uh, if you go to the San Francisco 49ers uh, stadium, they have these virtual reality stations. You can actually go in and watch the previous week's game and sit there and watch it in, in VR. It's pretty cool, okay? So what are we going to do? We're trying to find investors that want to you know, partner with us. And we're going to try to keep um, growing this, keep innovating, keep peeking around the corner so that we're ready for what's coming next. And you know, as well as anybody, this is changing really fast, OK? You have to stay on top of this. You know, how many of you have ever heard the story of what happened to Kodak? Anybody? G give me real quick. Give me, give me the 30 second version. I don't know like too many details. Okay, but you know what happened to them. They used to, they used to have 70,000 people working in Rochester, New York, right? They were the pioneers of digital you know, photography. The pioneers, right? They brought it to their board, to their chairman, and said, hey, this is what's coming. You know what he said? Bull, it's a fad. It'll never catch on, right? Wow, did he miss in a big way. You know how many people are employed now? About 6,000. Most of the Fortune 500 companies that are in existence right now, I'll bet you 50% of them won't even exist in 25 years. 
All right? It's changing that quickly. And you better be ready to stay on top of this. So we're looking, like I said, we want partners. Okay? We're focused on content. Oculus and some, you know, Samsung, they, they're, they're going to take care of the hardware. There's other companies who are going to do the software. Where FlexCoach has positioned, our niche is in the content. We developed a sled that has cameras 360 degrees around. So we can go out on the ice and film. And, you know, the players are wearing the sensors, right? So that we can come in and, again, you've got, you need that for the CGI, right? And it's so cool to see this. These cameras, you know, are, are able to look at this. We showed this in our demonstration to the Sabres. You can watch their, their coaches are going like this. And they're looking around. They're spinning around in a chair going, oh, my God. You, you know, I can't even repeat what they were saying. Right? It's, it's mind-boggling what's coming. Right? And think about the gaming aspects of this. Think also about, could you use this in medicine? You bet. Construction, architecture, right? Lots of opportunities. So we're looking at trying to get with all these different leagues. We're expanding beyond hockey, right? The NGBs are national governing bodies, USA Hockey, USA Soccer, Lacrosse, et cetera, all right? There's all kinds of different ways to drive revenue. Because at the end of the day, you need to drive revenue, all right? This is a quick, I can't leave that up there for too long, but look at the projections over here, okay? The profit um, in year three, once we get this thing up and running. Now, it's, all, it's up to us to convince an investor that we can make these numbers. That's the secret sauce, right? So, um, and you know, how are we gonna do that? What do we need to do next? There's some of the next steps that, that are going on. We did secure a $3 million investment, okay, from a hockey guy in Michigan that knows the tech industry, all right? So we're, we're getting there. We needed to get, we're trying to raise five, but we got a $3, $3 million. So there's those strategic partnerships. We'll continue to look down the road at what's coming next. And these are the guys that are, that are behind this. And, and I can tell you, Keith Blaze, whoop, I'm sorry, Keith Blaze, I met Keith in 1982 when I was director of amateur hockey development for the Penguins. He was the director of amateur hockey for the St. Louis Blues. And we have been friends ever since. But we hadn't seen each other or talked. Our paths didn't cross for 25 years. But that friendship, that relationship remained through USA Hockey. All right. He's now the head of this organization. Um, he's involved in international hockey, men's hockey, women's hockey, sled hockey. Okay. Um, it's, it's, you know, and, and we've got investors like Mike Sullivan, the head coach of the Penguins. All right. So this thing's about to just boom. So if you ever want to go see it, there you go. That's the website. Okay. Now, how many of you know who Kevin O'Leary is? From Shark Tank, right? Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Wonderful, right? Um, I was listening to him at a, at a conference, and this is what he said. If you want to be an entrepreneur today, it's 24-7, you know, 365, okay? And whether you like it or not, that's what it is. And you had better be prepared, all right? If you really want to make sure all you're doing is going to see your kid's soccer game and that sort of thing, yeah, then you better be able to delegate it to somebody or maybe this isn't for you, all right? Or you better put off having kids. I hate to be that blunt, but if you're into the work-life balance, that's the most important thing to you, be realistic, okay? Uh, this is a competitive world, and people in other countries, they don't care, all right? This is a global business, and it's just getting bigger, right? And the people that can figure out how to innovate the fastest, most nimble, right? Identify new markets, they're the ones that are gonna win, okay? Um, so anyway, rate, Ke Kevin's a funny guy. Uh, he really is. Okay, so I I'm gonna give you a little, you know, how many, how many of you, your, your 
career goal is you're going to design the next WhatsApp. Anybody? Okay. Who, who, who's going to uh, who's going to hit the lottery? Okay. Who, who wants to be a professional athlete? You know that sort of thing. That, that's what this slide is about. Any, anybody understand? This this is hockey. Anybody have any idea what that 700 might represent? Come on, give me a guess. The amount of people that play hockey like oh, brilliant, brilliant. That's how many jobs there are in the NHL. Okay, 700 in the world. Not in the United States, not in North America. Hey, that's Sweden, Finland, Germany, Austria, Russia. Okay, that's the reality. There's only 700 people get to play. What's the 3.4? Anybody? That's the average length of a career, 3.4 years. You got to play four years and to, to be able to be vested into the, um, their benefits program, retirement. The average is 3.4 years. The 5,200 you're not going to get. That's the number of certified neurosurgeons in the United States. It is easier to be a brain surgeon than it is to be a pro hockey player. Now, when I tell people this, ah, oh, you're just a Debbie Downer, you're negative Ned, you know, no, it's pragmatic. Okay, I'm just telling you, hey, I hope you, I hope somebody gets to do that. I hope you can be a professional tennis player, a professional soccer player, whatever. Okay, what's Plan B? That's all I want to know. Okay, and where does this impact you? Well, I want to work for Google. You know, I want to work for DigitalOcean. You know, I want to work for Amazon. All right? I want to work for SpaceX, whatever it might be. Right? Well, guess what? You better be in the top 1,000% one per, 1, of the people in your field because they're only going after the very best. All right? That doesn't mean you can't be successful. I'm not trying to bust anybody's bubble. Or, you know. Matter of fact, to me, this is exciting. There's never been a greater time to be alive in the world, okay? Never. The, the advances. They're talking about us being able to live to 120 years of age and, and have a decent quality of life, right? Artificial skin's right around the corner, right? They've got it to the point now where, you know, you, you lose a hand in an accident. The bionic person is, is almost here, okay? It's, it's all so exciting. And so there's lots of opportunity, OK? I call this pragmatic passion. Know thyself. You know who you are. Look in that mirror every morning when you wake up. All right? And if you want your life to be different, you got to tell me, what are you doing different that's going to create that change? If you keep doing the same thing, the results are going to be the same, OK? Tal Benchar, Harvard professor, says, you know, the perfect situation is to find that sweet spot, the heart of the watermelon, okay, the juiciest part, where what you want to do, what you're good at, what you have a passion for intersect. If you can find that, that is really the ultimate, okay? When you get to a point where somebody's paying you for something you would have done for free, Okay, and I've been lucky. I got to tell you, when I coached, I, I didn't make a lot of money here, coaching, but my wife will constantly remind me that's when I, when she thought I was my happiest. And you know why? I loved working with young people. I loved being a part of something bigger than me. All right? We won six national championships at the club level when I was coaching. Okay, we. I always ask that question: How many did I win? I didn't win any. We, we finished third my senior year when I played. I didn't win any. My players won six. I just got to lead the band. Okay? A lot of fun. We will always have that. Nobody ever gets to take that away from us. Okay? Real Leadership, this book by John Addison. He talks about, you know, it starts with you, that 
person in the mirror. I call it the mirror test, right? Every day, you ought to be looking there. And one of the things that I do, I, I could have put the picture in here, but I tape my goals to my mirror, okay? I'm gonna see it every day. If you don't, you talk about it. I don't care, you, you, know, now, you, know, you can put it on your iPhone or your droid, you know, and it dings and says, oh. to me, I wanna see it. I wanna see it, I wanna see it there every day. It reminds me, here's my goal. Here's what I wanna do. I'm more, more likely to act on it if I do that, okay? Um, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to do a self inventory. You know what your skills are. I told you before, if you have a problem standing up in front of people, giving a presentation, being able to meet somebody and ask them for half a million dollars to help fund your startup company, well, go learn how to do it. Go to a Dale Carnegie, go to a Toastmasters. There's places out there. Get a coach, get a business coach. Right? People say, oh, I can't afford that. What do you mean you can't afford it? You can't afford not to. All right? Here's another thing. Go to conferences, even if you have to pay for it yourself. That World Sports Performance Summit, I loved watching these young people come in. They shelled out a thousand bucks to be there. But you had some of the top people in the sports industry for three days at your disposal. Was it $1,000 well spent? Heck, just for the material they gave out, it was. But it was all those networking opportunities, just like this week, right? That's where it all happens, okay? So that down at the bottom, I talk about, I had to lay off one-third of my workforce every Thursday when I was a coach. Do you know what I mean by that? We had 30 guys on a team. How many get to dress? in hockey, anybody know? 20. So there were 10 of my players thought I was the biggest asshole in the world every Thursday. And you know what? On Monday, I had to hire them back at practice, right? That, that's not easy. You have to try to keep everybody happy and everybody wants playing time, everybody wants to be on the power play, everybody wants to be the team captain. It can only be one or two, right? Those are managerial skills that are gonna matter. You might be really good at designing things, but if you really wanna make the big money and you're running your own company someday, you have to learn to deal with people. You have to. And I'm telling you, there is no substitute other than to jump in and do it, all right? Until you've actually had to look somebody in the eye and tell them they no longer have a job or that they're being moved to a different unit, that's not fun. I, it, it is the most heart-wrenching part of what a manager, a supervisor, an owner of a business has to do. But you know what? If you're afraid to do it, if you don't do it, what could happen to your company? You'd be out of business before you know it. Why, because you didn't have the courage to do what had to be done? Hey, I had to ask my best friend to stop coaching in 1997. He had been with me for 10 years. I had to ask him, you're not putting enough time in anymore. The game has passed you by. It was hard. We're still the best of friends today, but it took a little time for that to happen. Well, he knows it was the right thing to do. When we replaced him with a new younger assistant coach who had good ideas, lots of energy, we played in 10 straight national championship games. I mean, that was a good move. I'm not the smartest guy in the room, but that one worked out pretty good, okay? So, at any rate, some of us need technology training. Some of us need to work out on relationships, okay? I always look at it this way. You go and get some help on your social skills, all right? How many of you have ever taken an etiquette class? When you sit down for a formal dinner, do you know where the drinks are and where the bread dish is? I'm gonna teach you something really simple. You go like this. You put the okay signs. There's the D, that's where your drink is. There's the B, that's where the bread dish is, okay? Do you, does that matter? You know what? 
If you're sitting in a room with some venture capital person that you're asking for $5 million to fund your company, it may. I'd rather know it than not know it, okay? I'd rather over-prepare, okay? And remember some. I, I look at it this way. To me, you are the elite athlete of your field, okay? You are technological warriors. That's what you have to look at yourself as, all right? You, you wake up in the morning. I, I, to, like I said before, to me, this is the greatest time in human history to be alive. Things are happening now that they could never have thought of 100 years ago, right? And it's going to keep happening. I hope that you'll remember that ethics is a big part of all this, okay? When you start doing things and it's going to harm people, that's not good for anybody. I, I like to call it CEC, civility, empathy, and compromise. There are three things that are lacking in the world today. Everybody thinks there has to be a winner and a loser, okay? I don't believe that. I believe that we should be finding a way to be able to agree to disagree without being disagreeable, all right? I don't care what your political background is. I don't care what your religion, your race, it doesn't matter. We should be working together for the greater good, all right? To me, that's when we know we've been successful, okay? That's when everybody wins. And there's plenty of things that happen. So anyway, that's, uh, that's my presentation. And I don't know how much time we got left. But uh, if there's any questions, uh, if you guys want to come down and take a look at some of the material. But anybody got any questions? Did I put you to sleep? Okay. Yes. So when you started your talk, you mentioned women being underrepresented in IT. And that's yep. my research passion. So imagine if you're talking to daughter who wants to study IST and go on to work in sports technology. Like what advice would you give to a young woman who's underrepresented in IT and then going into a sports uh, kind of discipline? That. Be bold. Don't take no for an answer. Okay? Look, you can sit back and say, life's not fair. You know, I'm just as good as that person or, you know, it, prove it. Do it. Walk in and say, I'm the best person. Okay? Here's my portfolio. Here's what I've done. Here's what I've studied. Here's what I've had hands on doing. Don't let anybody tell you that your dreams can't come true. Okay? Then you've got to wake up and make them happen. Okay? Uh, in my next talk that I'm giving, I talk there about, you know, a, uh, you know the dreams are just, you know, Anybody can dream, right? Goals are dreams with a deadline. Okay, so make your goals. And I, I, you push. I was a kid from Pittsburgh in 1982. When I would talk hockey to somebody, they'd look at you and go, you're from Pittsburgh, what the hell do you know about hockey? You know, that's a football town, it's a baseball town. People in Pittsburgh don't know anything about hockey, right? You know, did I let that stop me? No, you know what I made it do? I made it energize me, all right? So what I would tell you is, you know, you, you can sit back and make excuses all you want, all right? My daughter, I want her to go for it. I want her to just go and prove that you are the best person for that job. Walk in there and knock their socks off, all right? Be bold, okay? And you'll get it. You will. You know, the barriers are starting to come down. You know, it's not just the good old boys network anymore. It's still there. It's still there in some, you know, capacities, but it's changing, right? So you can be the victim or you can be the victor. That's up to you, okay? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I know this, if you're shy and you're quiet and you don't like you know, the thought of walking into a room where you might be in there with all these old, bald, white guys, with gray hair, you know, and it's a little intimidating to you, so what? Go in there, I tell you what, this is one of these little tricks I learned. Right before you walk into a meeting, you stand out and do this. That's your superhero pose. Go in and kick ass. Don't take any prisoners. 
All right? That's, look, you got to believe in you. If you don't believe in you, who's going to? Right? So I, I hope we're getting to the point where it's really the best person for the job that's going to get the job. Okay? And don't, we like said, don't. And you know what? Don't be afraid to, I can't remember, what's the guy that came up with WhatsApp? You know, that Google, who, who was it that, that said, nah, we don't want you? How, how do I like them now? Right? People are going to tell you no. So you either let it stop you or you let it energize you. You do it with dignity because you never know where you might meet up with that person down the road. Right? Don't make an enemy. Right? Just say, okay, I'm going to tuck that one back. I'm going to remember that. Okay? And here's the other thing. Help each other. Right? You ladies, you know, and I, again, remember, we don't want it to go the other way either. Right? I mean, it's go after the best person. Don't let those things make it there. We can talk about it. Right? And we can do all these things that we want to to try to educate people. At some point, it gets back to leadership. Right? I want people that are bold enough to do what needs to be done. Okay. Hope I answered your question there. No, that's, yeah, that's what it's about. Okay. Anybody else? Question? Yes. So is there any other option that you're focused on? Yeah, uh, probably the most uh, football, basketball, soccer. Soccer's the biggest global sport. Okay. Yep. Don't you think it's changing though? You, I don't know if you heard his question. It was, you know, soccer in America just hasn't, it's way out ahead of where it used to be. It's this close to getting over the hump. And you know why? Because Younger people have grown up with it, right? Hey, I grew up in Pittsburgh. We played football, basketball, and baseball. You know, some people wrestled. You know, nobody played golf. Nobody played tennis. And, you know, where I grew up, we couldn't afford to, right? Those were, you know, rich people's sports, right? Soccer just, well, right now, soccer's everywhere, right? It's only my... Ten years ago, could you watch a Premier League game on television? Right? Well, now you don't have to worry. Is TV even going to exist in 20 years? Who knows, right? Okay? You, you'll be wearing your Google Glass, right? And you'll be just watching the news as you're walking. I just can't wait to see the unintended consequences of all that, by the way, when people start walking into polls and, you know, that sort of thing. It's, again, it's a little scary to me, but it's going to happen. It's coming. The driverless cars, right? I mean, that freaks me out a little bit, but, you know, uh, they probably drive better than me. Um, and, but I think if you really think about soccer in the United States, the potential is huge, absolutely huge, right? It's booming. I, I see people right now, everywhere you go, it, 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 they, they understand it. They'll get, they'll get together in bars and watch the European leagues, right? That, that never existed 10 years ago. It's all changed. So my advice to you would be, if you're passionate about that, position yourself to take advantage of it, because it's coming. It's coming. You know, my, uh, my other passion beside hockey is golf. Okay? Golf is dying. All right? <laughs> they're, they're turning golf course. They've built so many golf courses so fast. You know, the Tiger Woods effect, right? Oh, everybody's going to start playing golf. And then people start looking, I got to pay what? <laughs> you know, it's going to take me six hours? Are you kidding me? All right, but look, it's, I like it. You know, although it, it really makes no sense that you're going to pay a lot of money to go out there and frustrate yourself. That's what golf does, right? And my wife, her, her comment is, you know, I, I, I can pick up golf anytime and be bad at it. Why start now? So she doesn't, she doesn't waste the money and all that. But I like golf. I, I'm a big golf. But I think hockey and golf, <laughs> you know, it's a hip and shoulder turn and that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, I think, I think it's coming. But are you aware of what's happening at some golf courses now? They're, they're actually taking soccer balls. And you, they have a big hole in, in the middle of the green. And you play soccer. You play soccer golf. Okay? 
That's pretty cool, all right? Think about that. Go Google it. Google knows everything, right, after all, you know? So you, I like the pivot that they've made. You got to do something. How many of you have ever seen the movie Caddyshack? Remember Rodney Dangerfield's famous line? Cemeteries and golf courses, two biggest wastes of real estate. Right? There's a lot of truth to that. So any, anybody else? Any other questions? Hey, thank you for, oh, you got, you got? Yeah, I have a question. So how is your experience as a coach translated over into like the workforce? Uh, it's invaluable because, you know, as a coach, you see every aspect of being a manager and a supervisor and you're a mentor. See, to me, I'd always look at, I want to work for a company or for somebody that understands mentor, not boss, right? Mentor, not boss. My job, I always believed my job as a head coach was to have assistant coaches who within three to five years were ready to go be head coaches someplace else, right? Not everybody thinks of it that way. Right? And I think it's the same thing even in the fundraising business that I'm in. Okay? If, if somebody's still with me 10 years later, I gotta wonder what their drive is. You know, like, well, you wanna just keep doing the same thing? Eh, okay, you know, fine, as long as you keep your level of productivity. But I, my, my feeling is my job is to make them better. I wanna know what their aspirations are and how can I help them get there. All right? that, that's who I wanna work for. I want to work someplace where it's all about the team. You know, and people don't care who gets credit. That's what you find in a lot of the successful team sports. Right? You're, the teams that win, inevitably, it's because of that togetherness factor. I tell people all the time, talent, you got to have it. I don't care if you're talking about IT, business, medicine, it doesn't matter. You got to have talent. But you also have to have those intangibles. You asked me at the beginning of the year to be a championship caliber team or a profitable company, what do you need? I'd say, look, you gotta have talent, but then after that, you gotta have leadership and you gotta have chemistry, culture, all right? And culture is a tough thing. Everybody talks about, you know, if we took a survey in here, can you create culture or does culture just take it, create itself? There's a lot of research on this now that's showing that, you know what? you. You can't really, culture just kind of happens, all right? It's, it's partly based on the people that you bring together, right? So do a good job. I can tell you this, I know this statistic. When you have to fire somebody, right, it's basically 10 times as costly than the money you would have spent on the front end just making a better hiring decision. Vet them out better on the front end. But you know what happens? People are, don't look at it that way. They, they say, oh, I just, you know, we, we got to hire this new person in IT or, you know, marketing or whatever. Let the, I need to get this off my plate. All right, so, you know, let's get up. All right, that kid's good, right? Well, then they turn out to be no good because you didn't vet them out. You didn't really do your homework. Then you're paying for it on the back end. Now you got to fire them. You got to find a replacement. You got to train them again. There's a hole there when you get rid of them, et cetera. I'd make sure... I was putting the time in on the front end, okay? That is recruiting as a coach, right? It's being able to evaluate talent. It's being able to take that talent, figure out where do they fit on the bus, okay? And we all have roles, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what you guys all hate hearing, right? What do they say about millennials, okay? They wanna be the CEO tomorrow, right? And there's people here this week who've done that, right? They, they figured it out, okay? Let's count on two hands how many of them there are. What about the rest of us? We had to kind of earn our stripes, right? So by the way, as you're earning those stripes, it's okay to figure out, ooh, I didn't figure out how to make bread, but I was the person that figured out how to slice it and put it inside a wrapper and distribute it faster, right? Look at things and go, wow, how can we take this and make it that, that people want, right? Okay. So as a coach, I'm looking at things and going, all right, I'm playing this team. I know what this team does. If I keep doing the same thing over and over again and we keep losing to them, 
shame on me, right? That, that's no different than if you're in marketing, right? You're trying to figure out how do we make increased sales? Well, if you keep advertising in the same places and, it keeps, and the sales don't increase, you're doing something wrong. Adjust, improvise, adapt, overcome, okay? So that's what we coaches, you know. By the way, I do have a PhD. It's in BS, but I do have a PhD, so at any rate. Well, I think we probably all let them go, all right? What do you think? Thank you. Uh, hope you learned. If you learned one thing out of this talk today, it was worth your time. And I, I, can, stay, I can stay down here for a little while if anybody wants to come down and you know, if you haven't been to Pagul Ice Arena, please go over there and enjoy that. I know every square inch of that place. It was one of the greatest joys of my life to be able to help design it, help get it built. By the way, we got it built on time and under budget, which never happens at Penn State. And we're really proud of that. So at any rate, good luck to you all. Okay.